Hi, I'm Pat Gunn, and this is uh, part of my Let's Play series for Fallout 4. Here we're going to attempt to go and face the Mechanist. We've already visited the Mechanist's lair once, and uh, we got a whole lot of good loot, and now it's time to go back and finish the job. So, hey. yes. uh, off we go. Pretty nice that we uh, finally have a good fast travel point that's east of. I'm not sure if this is the Charles River or not, but uh, it is one which is on the other side of the river. We eventually would like to get a, a nicer variety of landmarks around here. We need to get the airport, need to get the police station over there, and so on. But at least we have a foothold. So, down we go, and we're going to continue our exploration of this area. I think we only made it maybe a third of the way through before. I'm hoping that we won't have to make a third trip, but if we have to, we have to. <clears throat> you might hear some cat sounds, because one of my cats is on my lap right now. And she is fairly noisy at times. I'm hoping the directional microphone will cut most of that out. Okay, finally. So, generally while we're in here, I think having the Tesla rifle ready is going to be our safest bet. remember that there was a way in here to turn on some things that uh, have laser okay so we don't need to leave that on well, we don't need to leave that on maybe maybe that was just a time event and there isn't a way to get that turned back on again so, bummer. but it's like I think this actually might be. No, I'm not sure. That might or might not be where, uh, where we're trying to go at the end of all of this. But the lighting is not good, and we're pretty far above the ground there. So maybe that system. So keep on moving. The areas that we've largely been before. I don't think those are our doing because generally the robots wouldn't be pulled in those directions. You can kind of imagine this place being bustling, but unfortunately it also would have been kind of uh, cramped because there really aren't any windows. All of this is underground. But I I'm think that this was meant to be a secret facility anyhow, so maybe that's to be expected. acid out of there, and acid is another one of those ingredients that you don't see a lot of, although it's also it's, it's also an ingredient that you don't particularly need a lot of, so not really worth fussing over too much. Um, can we explore in there? Yeah, I think we must have. I think that you enter there through the other room. So that's interesting. I wouldn't have expected there to be a robot there because it would have had to have traveled quite far from wherever it was that we didn't see it in our last drive. Here. Now that is a bizarre security protocol. Oh, get in.
not going to be able to get into that room quite yet, but that might be our final destination. Maybe. It's hard to tell when it's... Oh. Scan this. And another one. Fallout 4, I found that it usually makes sense to keep grabbing. I often found myself running out of concrete in the game. And concrete is one of those things where, if you do want to get it, then you, you certainly can manage it. Uh, I usually just will always buy concrete from every vendor that I ever visit that sells it, because I've very rarely had too much of it. Ooh, uh, over there we can see somebody is trying to come and greet us. Let's turn off our flashlight. Yeah, the fun thing about this weapon is that you can charge it. So if I did have any mods that I was positively itching for the Ada, this would be a chance, but I don't at the moment. I've actually gotten her up to a pretty good state. So that air looks a little bit wavery. <laughs> Makes sense to do that before I get into the area, probably. Being non organic Looks pretty radioactive up there. You? That's a different story. Uh, is there anything good that we would want? Uh, nothing super exciting, but uh, yeah, that's just some political drama. If I remember correctly, it's about a cigarette machine that some employee was uh, setting up uh, in their in their own workplace without permission or anything like that. Which is it's kind of cute. I, I guess that's one of the things that you find in the Fallout series of games that people were living their lives and they still had very human squabbles and concerns the whole way through. So, in a way, it makes it more human because you can see that, like, these were not saint saints or abstractions of humanity. I mean, obviously, they were a little bit abstractions of humanity, but they weren't terribly different from real people. They still did stupid things, they still said stupid things, they were impulsive, greedy and so on, and that helps you realize, like, you're moving in the ruins of a civilization that was once a pretty healthy, normal one. And I know that you could probably make an argument that the abuses that you see in the civilization world are unique and weird and totally unlike uh, reality, or they're a parody or something like that, but I don't think they are. I think that this level of stuff actually does happen and it's just most of us aren't in the positions uh, to spot it. Let's see if we can take out this foe. They have some trouble. Okay. Got some nice damage at a distance there. And it looks like our foe is not here. Sweet. Yeah, we made 
to that uh, perfectly well. Well, almost. I mean, we took some hits, but we didn't take a lot of hits. Oh. gigantic machinery moved through here at one point, which is interesting for an underground robotic shop. <coughs> okay, more big radioactive power plants, probably. Hooking the wall to try and reduce the radiation that I'm going to suffer. Super successful here. I'm gonna charge up just because well, I don't remember for sure. My intuition tells me that this would be a great place to spring stuff on somebody. that we don't get into combat in this area, that should be okay. speakers. You hear from it that apparently the mechanist thinks uh, that they are serving a just cause. I don't want to have Ada fall off. Let Ada go. Okay, apparently Ada is an idiot. It's unfortunate. I would have liked to have had some backup firepower as I ride this platform, but she just slipped right off and she's floating around down there. And we're going to have to rely on her to teleport back to us as we progress onwards. Okay, so other side here. Half disassembled robot, some fuel. Duct tape, cleaner. Yeah, but she should probably just pop up behind me not too long, which I guess is kind of important because I need somebody to, yes, use this to do that. something that strikes me as unrealistic about all this. Oh, and this is another view into that room. In that, if you actually have a facility this large, it had better be almost completely automated, because if you have significant people in it at all, then they're going to look really weird going single file into a small facility every day. Like, nobody would possibly Open believe this. that the number of people needed to staff this place uh, nobody would probably believe that you see those people stream in that they're all just going to do some robotics. So for this, we can deduce that either the place was heavily automated or it was not secret. Maybe it wasn't. I mean, the other option, of course, is that I'm just overthinking all this, which is also probably true. Hmm, lots 
with plates. Not sure why there would be so many plates. Or a bucket, but... some uh, cooking down here, which would make sense. Those valuable sea captain's hats. Oh. That's an item that definitely should not be hey. here. Looking to lighten your load. Hey. The reason that a, a Deathclaw skin should not be down here is that Deathclaws were, at the very least, quite rare and maybe didn't exist before the war. Be happy to help if I can. Okay, productive. It has to have four things in common. This seems That's cool. it. Ah, good. And this is a place for confiscated goods. Some nice pistols. Uh, some rat eggs. Which I guess they probably were one of the few places before the war with all those nuclear uh, plants and stuff that, that we saw earlier. They actually would need uh, would need them here, unlike they would in most other parts of the world. Probably, although the the pre-war world did seem to have a kind of flagrant disregard for the dangers of nuclear stuff. But yeah. now this is actually a great find yes. because you end up spotting whole lot of stuff that is kind of rare and expensive, and it's just all here for the taken. But that's generally a theme for this place. This is really a pre-war. Uh, it, it houses so many good relics. The danger is quite high, having robots wandering through that presumably would like to kill us. And that looks like a dead ghoul. Also looks like a dead ghoul. But Vault Boy does show that some of these guys are actually alive. And generally, if there's a foe that can't get to you, and you can get to it, it makes sense to take it out. like there were prisoners here for some reason. It's kind of odd. Why would you have prisoners in a uh, facility like this? We do not the Okay, so 
so we have a garage door here, which appears to do nothing. And we have some stairs going up. So let's head up the stairs and see what we have. Okay, so we have terminals. So apparently people here were looking up here and they were doing something with the bodies of people. They were not looking for particularly sane people either. They were looking for violent but still intelligent people. If they would observe them from up here, what would they be doing with them? And there's a stealth boy, which is a little bit of an odd thing to have here. <coughs> So the, the, the story here is not quite complete yet. So let's keep moving and see if it's become a little bit clearer. Okay, so this is the entrance. We've already been through here. What did we miss? So we can't open any of these doors we want to. Oh, and now this is open. But let's see what happens when we push the button. Uh, Ada, where are you? Kind of like to not do this alone. Okay, so just going upstairs has exposed this room to us, and now we're able to head down. very broad room. Now, again, we have to assume that there would be better ways to get through the facilities than wander through these uh, these holes like this. We have to assume that. Because nobody would build a building this way. What we spot here is a whole lot more good loot, including some more of these novels. A chief scientist holotape. Okay, we're collecting these because we spotted upstairs that uh, if we get enough, uh, or chief, voices from chief people are enough to potentially unlock the security lockdown, which is pretty interesting. Now, there's apparently some weird light show stuff going on, or this might be a bug. But there's brains floating in jars. There's all sorts of medical stuff going on here. It should be making us a little bit queasy. What was going on here? Why were there blood packs? Why are there all those brains? Oh, there and there's... So apparently there were some death claws before the war, and they actually had them here, so maybe that death claw hide is not quite so weird. Either that, or people have been here since, and the facility might have been restored and then destroyed again. In the meantime, we don't know. Because it'd be tempting to just assume Gun turret. Bad stuff is going on for us here. Let's get rid of And what we spot here is a brain in a jar which we've already seen those before. This, but what we can assume from this is this is where those were made. We don't want to have any turrets uh, attacking us. We'll clear that out. Lost, but not forgotten. Now, we made a 
trade off. And then again, we gave Ada the laser head, which is great, but it means that her aim is going to be shit. So she's really only going to be good if she can get better to close in person. The nice thing is if you get parts, if you move parts off of a foe, then you can just reuse them directly. Here we see a furnace. You wouldn't really want to get close to anything that looked like that in real life. The heat rippling out through the air would probably kill you. But Fallout doesn't seem to care, and if Fallout doesn't kind of care, then we're good. So what we have here is a furnace. All this area is guarded by bots. And it looks like there are hospital beds and then devices attached to those hospital beds holding brains, which is a little worrying. And we have a RoboBrain assembly area here. Do I have this password? Looks like I do. Open this door. And we're gonna sneak and turn off our lights. Now this Robo Brain is actually active and a foe. Except it's not doing it. It's apparently only theoretically a foe. And I think that same is true for all these things. They're also only theoretically a foe. So we don't get any experience for defeating these things. Which is probably pretty reasonable. They are targetable, but there's nothing, no real reason to target them, so we'll leave them alone. They don't actually appear to have anything controlling them. Missed something. I know that we have two of the three chief something or another tapes that we wanted to have. Um, my gut feeling is that if we progress further, we actually leave. Uh, we leave the area where these tapes are and and go to a, uh, a fight with the final boss. That's not really the way I'm. I want to, uh, to play this. It, it's doable. There's nothing wrong with doing it, but... But in Fallout, Fallout is very significantly about choices. Now, this this makes no sense whatsoever. Moldy food, the, the food would be dissolved to dust after this many years. Unless it was brought in long afterwards. Okay, surgical tray, bone cutter... Microscopes are heavy, but they are full of wonderful components. So we have the Chief Scientist's holotape. We have the Lead Engineer's holotape. And we have
So, oh, there's the facilities directors. And that, I think, is what we're missing. This area pretty uh, thoroughly. Okay, brain extraction, robo brain R and D. Cere cerebral reconditioning. Yeah, so this is a pretty grisly tale. This was pretty clearly done by people who extracted the brain from criminals, stuffed them into robots, and intended them to be used in combat situations, which seems like a fate that's probably worse than death. I'm, and I don't use that term lightly. I, I, I'm not the sort of person who thinks that death is necessarily the worst thing that can happen to somebody, but... Over here. But it's also... do it that way. So I'm going to have to find the holotape that I missed. So it's not here, not in the R&D area. ways back. But in order to use this thing, we actually have to backtrack anyhow, so it's not that bad. Is there? Yes, there is. So, up we go. it's not up here, but given that we can drop down at the end, we don't lose anything by checking it out. Yeah. Okay, so it must be out here somewhere. And what we're looking for is not here. Again, we're basically backtracking to the beginning of this uh, zone anyhow. Oh, neat, it's rocking. That is a neat visual effect. substation. Mm. Ah, missed a gas canister, uh, canister, and you always want to have lots of oil. Except I think that this actually isn't the facilities wing. 
So it's in the Facilities Wing Management Office, which I'm pretty sure is in this area. So this is where we missed it. And when we're done, we're going to head back through this area, but it is in this zone that we are looking for the voice of a dead person. Which is really what a lot of these things are. Like, every every time somebody writes something down, it has a pretty good chance of outlasting them. Arts Warehouse. Which makes it, a, it's kind of an interesting thing to think about. Like, every everything that you write is something that will represent you to the extent that people even care to see you represented, which might not be a, a large amount. I mean, unless people develop a curiosity, most of us are going to be kind of forgotten after we're, uh, after we're gone, but still. At least in terms of the possibility of being known. Our words generally will will last much longer than we will. My ride counter is spiking. We may want to move. Oh, well, we did move. So chill out. Ooh, I definitely was not observant enough because I missed that oil can. So where can we find the voice of a dead person here? The thing that makes it weird is that we know that even if somebody theoretically could make the effort to know us, to find us, uh, that is what we need. How often do you think that actually happens? Like, if you were to name somebody long since uh, dead, how often do you think somebody would just generally tend to try and find... What was that person like? I mean, maybe a historian might just do it by chance. But it's pretty... And so, really, this representativeness... Representation is about joining the mind of somebody who's being represented and some kind of an audience. And if there's no audience, then there may be still some joy in representation for the person who's trying to represent themselves. But it's kind of ineffective and empty. Which is maybe okay. I mean, heck, uh, I, I do... A, publish a whole a uh, whole lot of content all over the place sometimes under my own name sometimes under other names and I'm under no illusions that many people are going to find it the least bit interesting and if people do great but I'm not going to count on that and so I I just suspect that really the same thing applies to everybody whether they're in touch with reality or not. And so maybe to the extent that being in touch with reality is a curse, uh, it hurts people's ability to have that kind of fulfillment in thinking that they're being known. But in reality, if they're not being known, then what's the point of it all? Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to load the holotape. There's the chief, chief scientist holotape. Anise Ciroletti, chief scientist. This is the third time I've had to request more security. As thorough as our assembly procedures may be, there's a human factor to be considered. These are criminal and unstable minds. It can't be a scientist's job to ensure each test subject is properly sedated. I was promised military assistance and security, but we need more. I won't allow my crew to be endangered. Okay, so we might not need to play the whole thing, which would be nice. Let's see if this is enough. Tony Delano facilities. Air filtration's on the fritz again. It's like a constant haze in here. I swear to God, if you... Is that enough? Yes. So they just need to a, a quick clip. A chief scientist, facilities director, and then lead engineer. It's a little bit funny. Lead like engineer. You can easily read Thomas that Harkin. as lead engineer, like the chemical element. So far, we're tracking on schedule for the latest RoboBrain milestone. 
Okay. So what we have here is a one-way elevator. And we're gonna use it. Down we go. Now some people might really enjoy the epic fight that we're skipping here. Slip in and grab some good stuff. I bought pods. Pretty sweet uh, thing that you can add to your uh, settlements now. And it looks like whoever lives here has some pretty boring tastes in food. is going to follow us down or not. We can leave them their coffee. Warning. Hello. Uh, all points of access to this room. Well, obviously, you don't. A regretful miscalculation. You bypassed the pinnacle of free war security systems. Uh -huh. Let us discuss this amicably. Who are you? You're right. It's true. There. Now we both know. You think I'm the enemy here? I'm. They have taken innocent lives. My friends. They were only sure. people that threaten. The robots are programmed. Uh -huh. The testing was thorough. I ran. Mm -hmm. Call it user error, then. One of your robo-brains admit- No. I, I don't believe- Think about it. The introduction of a human brain creates too many unknown variables. You can't claim to know them all. I took all the necessary precautions. I like that Ada is somewhere remote, this and we can still hear her never voice. Be taken. And the data. They- uh -huh. No. It's- I was hoping it was the robo-brains. Maybe that's why you don't stick human brains in robots. I want to help. I, found, mm -hmm. I accept full right. But this doesn't. I'm not here to kill you. Done. Consider it, and you won't regret. Uh -huh. Here, take. You can use it to shut down the security pro. Uh -huh. Okay. So we now apparently. And control or shut down or do whatever to the to the facility. I have to admit, doing the epic fight is a lot of fun, but I enjoy the sneaky way to solve this quest. Now we have control of the workshop here. Ditched her, uh, her gear. Mechanist. Hey, just one more thing. If you have a minute. Mm -hmm. Sure. Go. Oh, good. Um, mm -hmm. I just mm -hmm. wanted to say, and in order to. Sure. It's the. Mm -hmm. So these are decent items in, in a sense. The problem is, again. Thank you. You're welcome. There's one more thing. Mm -hmm. There are still rope. My communications are. Uh -huh. Sure. Great. Give me a minute. Holy smoke, right? So she apparently was confused, and her robots ended up killing a lot of people. I feel a little bit of a, uh, weird about the whole thing. In that if there were a functioning justice system, then you can imagine that there would be some pretty harsh consequences for having fucked up so badly and having Going killed so many on. people. Even... Security even three. without ill will. Heads up. What can I do for you?
but Your return is a relief. at the same I time, the I'm, I'm not done. a super vengeful person, or at least nobody I knew was killed by these things. I suppose I still conceivably could do vengeance if they had, but that's kind of a complicated topic. Um, given that nobody, I, I, given that it's not personal, I find it easier to take a more uh, forgiving stance. But in reality, I suppose, if somebody I knew and loved were killed by somebody uh, like uh, like her, then there's a decent chance that in revenge I would uh, knock her off. And I wouldn't be ashamed of it. I'd see these things as natural and reasonable, and we are creatures of stories. Your return is a relief. I trust the outcome was what you wanted. I got her to see the truth. So the mechanist, did she reveal her mo She was fooled by her- A biological wild card. Uh -huh. Many good people. It's a shame a mind is brilliant. She's an idiot. She's lucky to be alive. I'm uncertain if my logic protocols could override. Mm -hmm. Still, I now had the mechanist's robots remain halting, if not mm -hmm. with this knowledge. Okay, and so now we actually have all the robot modifications open to us. I mean, except for those that are locked by our low skill in certain things. And we're ready to head back to... Uh, Red Rocket, but now I finally have what I need to build my the traders that I use to link together my settlements. So the, uh, the next video you see, I will have at least linked several of them together. I generally won't link empty settlements because the game has a lot of weird bugs relating to that. Don't think I won't hurt you. who it was. <clears throat> yes? Oh, it's a scaffer? I'm not sure it's the scaffer that was being shot at or not. Maybe this? Make sure you don't leave anything useful behind. Could be the radar. Yeah, and, and I guess it makes sense to even grab the leather because it can be decomposed into leather that can enhance other... Uh, other gear. So I think that probably marks the end of what we are trying to do uh, in this video. There might be some new foes out there. I don't see them. But I think we're good. And we've ar arrived to a nice pretty evening. That's, that's another one of the things I appreciate about the game. It just has these moments of, of beauty. And they're not overblown. They're still fairly casual. In that you look can't, alive. You can't get to choose whether you want to investigate them or not. That old stuff worth anything? And now that we're done with the Ada, we can switch companions back to <coughs> McCready. There you are. I almost thought you forgot about me. Time to hit the road. I knew you couldn't live without me. So we'll leave Ada at Red Rocket. And McCready is our bud now. Okay, so that's the end of this video. Um, I will see you in the next one when we'll have some brand new adventure to go on.